Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are uh, doing okay. And welcome to uh, our webinar on uh, linking training interventions to business results. Would you kindly uh, confirm via the chat room that you can hear me well and you can hear my voice clearly and see my uh, slideshow? So I'll give you a minute. Okay, Emil, thank you very much. Emil is saying that all's good. This time is hearing me as well. Excellent, thank you. I'm gonna allow a few more seconds for everyone to uh, reply and then we shall start right away. Thank you very much for joining <clears throat> one more time. Such an interesting topic. I'm assuming that everyone in the room right now is uh, is uh, in the training field or at least in the HR field. And as we are all keen to prove that our efforts are uh, worthy and can be uh, shown to management in a tangible way, Let's start uh, directly this very interesting topic. So how we can, in fact, uh, link training intervention to business results. Before that, let me, uh, let me give you a little bit of background about MER Training and Consulting, the provider of uh, this webinar. Merck has been in the market for 62 years right now, relying on the five values that you can see uh, in front of you in order, to, uh, in order to be able to deliver uh, cutting edge training and consultancy solutions for its clients uh, across the region. And that's why, based on Merck's experience with really creating tangible results with clients that kept coming back to Merck, certainly uh, 62 years back, I was not part of Merck. I was not part of this world <laughs> to begin with. So uh, having, having said that, uh, you know, when clients come back, then this certainly means that they have seen uh, good results from the business that they have been doing with uh, the company. So the company offers, as uh, I was saying, uh, classroom training, virtual training, and consultancy uh, services. Certainly with uh, a little bit of background of the company, you'd like to know a little bit of background about myself. My name is Rabia. Uh, I'm a management consultant with my training and consulting, working uh, in the capacity of delivering HR and leadership training and HR consultancy. I've had great opportunity to work in the region in many positions related to training and development. I've also taught uh, some HR courses for master students and I hold myself uh, two masters uh, one from Lebanon and one from the uh, UK so uh, a little bit only about also our uh, the newest uh, offering Merck is now offering online learning solution we have been planning for this for eight months right now and Nowadays, with the lockdown, you can uh, know that that's a must. And that's also an option that's going to be viable, I believe, in the market. So we are designing our courses uh, internally by our subject matter experts in a way that really suits the market that we operate with, that is really relevant to the market. It's based on the experience of our consultants in the region and with clients from private and public sector in GCC and the Middle East. Our uh, solutions are not static. They are absolutely engaging. Uh, and uh, certainly they are designed with the learner in mind to be the center of the learning intervention. So I'm seeing that more people have joined. So please feel free to let me know if you cannot uh, hear my voice clearly. Please also feel free to uh, 
uh, write down any question that come up to you, uh, come up to your mind at any point in time uh, through the chat. Now, since uh, this is a webinar, it's not an interactive workshop. I um, I'm uh, muting your mics just to make sure that your background noise will not impact the participation and the focus of everyone else. So excuse me in advance for doing so. However, we can communicate via uh, the chat. And if you have any technical problem, you can directly chat with our MERT technical support who is online to help you as well. So I'm pretty sure that uh, you're very interested in the topic. So please allow me to dive in directly into the topic itself. So the main challenge is how to bring together those two parallel lines, which are the business KPIs and the training KPIs. Now, as a matter of fact, um, being in the learning and development uh, industry for a while and having the opportunity to visit hundreds of clients in the region, you can know that every business seeks the following KPIs, revenues, efficiency, market share, sales growth, profitability, customer return, productivity. That's what they aim for. However, if you look at the KPIs of the training department, they focus on the number of learning hours that are delivered, number of full-time employees trained, they focus on the cost per training, the learner satisfaction, the uh, number of courses per year that they have offered, how was the attendance, and whether they adhere to the budget or not. Um, that's good. But unfortunately, not good enough. We need to bring those two uh, lines together to make sure that they meet so they make sense. So our training offering inside the organization will make sense to the business and it will save us lots of headache in terms of fighting for budgets, making sure that to prove ourselves that we are contributing positively to the success of the organization, we're not a, uh, a travel agency that coordinates training slash flights and accommodation for people. We are not an entertainment department that people go to just to go a little bit outside the routine of the job and, you know, re refresh their minds. We are business people. And if we want to be contributing to the business, we need to start talking the business language. And the business language is money. Whether you are as myself, a, uh, a learning advocate that really sees that learning shouldn't be always related to money, or you are a business person, the people in the management, this is what they look after. And this is what we need to do as well, because no company is an NGO. And even NGOs, they have funds and money and they need to uh, spend it wisely. So how do companies make money? That's the first and most important question that we as HR people and specifically as training and development professionals need to really understand. And it's fairly easy. Companies make money when more customers buy more, more often. That's one aspect. So if the customers buy more often and every time they pay more and you are getting more customers, then you're most probably making money. Companies make money when unnecessary costs like the cost of the operation, the unnecessary cost of maintenance, manpower, downtime, insurance, penalties, taxes is saved. Companies make money where their products sell at high margins, when the, the products themselves are profitable. And also companies make money when people and machines produce more of what sells or helps selling. 
So that's what really triggers the mind of a, uh, a top management executive or a CEO. In other words, the CEO listens not to training people, but they listen to businessmen and women with training expertise. So that's the transformation, ladies and gentlemen, that we need to undergo ourselves. We need to transform ourselves from training professionals to business people that come with training expertise. That's the only way that we will start making sense to people at the top and gaining position and status at the top as well. So having said that, how we can link training interventions to business results, our main topic and our very important topic. To be able to do that, we need to understand a very basic financial formula called the return on investment formula or the ROI formula. And the formula is absolutely easy. It comes as a percentage. It's, uh, it's presented usually as a percentage and it's very straightforward. Anything that a company does has an ROI that can be calculated. Whether they buy a new facility or they invest in a new software or they, uh, they uh, do insurance plans or they recruit people, any activity, any kind of activity, not an, an HR activity, but any activity, a marketing activity, uh, an event for clients, an event for employees has an ROI because ideally every activity must have benefits and certainly it has cost. And to calculate the ROI, it's benefits minus cost divided by the cost, the whole thing multiplied by 100, you will get a percentage called the return on investment or the ROI. And I'm sure you're familiar with lots of uh, methodologies to calculate the ROI on training. And honestly, I'm cutting uh, a very long way short here by getting right to the uh, most important thing of the discussion, which is how to calculate the ROI, how to talk money with business people at the top. That's uh, why what I'm going to do with you during this webinar is absolutely practical and honestly uh, everything that I'm going to share is something that I worked on personally during my career so it's foolproof it has been um, it has been uh, uh, proven worthy in my experience and I hope that you relate to the examples that I'm going uh, to share. So I would ask you again to uh, uh, grab a pen and a paper, maybe because you're gonna uh, need to follow with me with some notes. Maybe I have everything on the slides, but this might be uh, helpful. And again, please feel free to stop me at any moment that um, I cannot under, uh, I cannot explain very well, so I can repeat again and make sure that I'm making sense uh, for you. Certainly, the examples are chosen from different aspects. And why I'm going by example, ladies and gentlemen, because the calculation of ROI on training, which is mainly the link between training intervention and business result, depends on the business case. So honestly, you cannot have one Excel templates where you go and put some input and then you will have the uh, ROI calculated. It's a little bit more complicated. I'm hoping that with the examples that I'm going to share right away, you will be able to get a, a practical grasp of uh, this very interesting topic. And certainly by the end, I'm going to allow um, uh, enough time for questions and answers so you will be able to uh, to participate accordingly. So having 
presented the ROI formula, let me go to my first example. And for those of you who have uh, salespeople in their um, organization, I guess that you relate most to this example uh, specifically. In uh, having said that, this company, certainly I'm uh, using here a uh, fake numbers and uh, like not the real numbers that I have experienced, as you know, but it's fairly uh, close to reality. So assume that I am working in uh, a company that sells uh, properties, real estate properties. And in this company, I have 10 salespeople. And first, most importantly, what you need to do as training professionals is to identify the business problem the business problem if there is no problem or there is no uh, future aspiration for the business that can be solved by training then training is not a necessity on so let me give you a little bit of the situation so i have 10 sales people that sell real estate properties and uh, my CRM, which is the customer relationship management uh, system, told me that on average, their closing rate is two out of 10. In other words, for every 10 clients they meet, only two purchase a property and eight don't purchase a property. From benchmarking the market, we know that the average in the market is three out of ten so certainly there is a gap here that we need to address with training so we said that a solution might be a three-day training on negotiation skills that might allow those salespeople to close three deals instead of two out of every ten clients they meet. Our CRM tells us as well that every salesperson meets on average four potential clients a day, and that's nearly 900 clients a year. So if they close two out of 10, then every salesperson yearly closes 180 deals. And those 180 deals per one salesperson will be a total of 1,800 for all the sales team members, which are 10. So eight, eight, 180 times 10 is 1,800. And let's assume that the average pro profit per deal is $300. Now, certainly a, you never sell a real estate property and you make $300 out of it. But we're taking this number just for uh, the assumption uh, itself, knowing also that you will have um, you will have lots of cost involved in selling the uh, in selling the uh, real estate property, and maybe the the pure profit will not be a as you hear like in millions or something like that. So that's our business problem any questions so far ladies and gentlemen anything that you'd like to say all good okay no news is good news let's follow so the business problem is this allow me to explain how the sales uh, the uh, sales training on negotiation skills would create benefits. So if the three-dayer training was beneficial, our aim is to go from 1,800 deals into 2,700 deals, which is 900 additional deals per year in total for everyone in the team. So if every deal makes $300 in profit, then the total profit would increase in $270,000. Now, 
Now, this is the best case scenario where every salesperson will apply every single thing they learned in these three days and then all of them will achieve the target of selling three out of ten clients instead of two out of ten clients. To be realistic, and I'm imagining myself talking to the sales manager from whom I'm going to take the budget for training, and I'm going to tell him I'm not going to promise you that ten out of ten salespeople will apply. I will accommodate for the worst case scenario where only two out of ten salespeople hit this target. The profit then would be $54,000. Why 54? Because if two close three instead of um, three instead of uh, two, then everyone is adding 90. Two are adding 1,800, 1,800, uh, uh, sorry, 180, 180 times 300 which is the average profit per deal, then we will end up with a profit of $54,000. So having said that, now one more thing remains. Remember the formula, benefit minus cost divided by cost times 100. So we need to calculate now the training cost. So usually the training cost main or major uh, major components are first the provider's cost. So I'm assuming a $4,000 a day from a provider times three is $12,000. You'd also need to add the cost of salaries for the employees for the three days of attendance. So if an employee uh, is paid in total with benefits and everything, $200 a day, then uh, the salaries that I'm paying for the employees to attend this training sum up to $6,000. And I'm assuming that I have a training coordinator that takes two days in order to coordinate everything. And if the training coordinator uh, gets paid $100 a day, then these are $200. And also if the training is done, then you would need catering, and catering would acquire $3,000 approximately. So the cost of training is $21,200. Now I'm going to calculate the ROI, and I'm going to calculate it for both scenarios. The first scenario, which is the best case scenario, benefit is $270,000, and the second one, which is the worst case scenario, where the benefit is only $54,000. Now, bear in mind with me, you're going to see some very surprising numbers, but that's okay. I'm going to explain what's going to happen right now. So if you just apply the math, the basic arithmetic operators, the ROI in the best case scenario would be 1,174%. It means that every dollar I spend on training returns $11.74. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no business on earth does this amount of ROI. So you don't go and promise the sales manager or the organization of such an ROI. This is lunatic. No one will believe you. The worst case scenario is 155%. So having those in mind, I can, if I take the the ROI to be 300%, then it means every dollar I'm spending on training is returning $3 a year, $3 a year. This is a very good return on investment. Those of you who have uh, uh, some investments would know that, for example, if you are investing in real estate property, you can dream of a 10% ROI. So as you can see, learning pays off. However, a three-day program on negotiation skills is not a magic wand and will not certainly create such a great momentum. So maybe you would consider building a long-term sales program 
that would really develop the competencies necessary for the salespeople to jump on from two to three deals per, uh, 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 from out of every 10 clients they meet. Now, I'm pretty sure that if you go to, your, to any manager with such calculations, do you think they would be giving you the budget more easily? Absolutely, they would do that. But if you go without such a solid analysis, then there is no base for discussion. And all you can wish for is that the manager that you're talking to is a training believer, and then they would approve the training that you have spent so much time, so much time being uh, uh, coordinating, planning, discussing with providers, and etc. So that my, was my first example. I'm going to take another example that doesn't relate to sales. So hopefully I'm relating to more of the industries that you personally come from. So I'm going to take a plant, a manufacturing plant, and I'm going to take a safety uh, training scenario right now. And in this example, I'm not going to approach it from a face-to-face -face regular uh, learning approach, but from a uh, pre-recorded short sessions because safety awareness trainings, is, this is how they are usually uh, done nowadays in the manufacturing industry. So my, again, I'm following the same format, business problem, training benefits, and then training cost. So the business problem is the following. 20, I have in this uh, plant 20 major safety incidences happening every year in the shop floors and knowing that those shop floors employ 1000 employees the company from the financial statement have tell us have told us that they are paying 150000 in government penalties for safety incidents in the workplace yearly so you can see now the pain of the business where is it come where it is coming from and why the need for training. Now, those safety incidents, uh, incidences on top of the $150,000, they are causing 300 days of absenteeism or day off yearly, where the average daily salary of a worker in this uh, shop floor is $30. As well, when you go to the insurance and you renew your insurance on yearly basis, Whenever there are more incidents, so your premium is going to be higher and the company is paying an additional $20,000 yearly because of those incidences. So as you can see, everything in the business problem is relating employee behaviors or bad behaviors to money. And that's how you link training to business results. So how would I assume that the training benefit would happen? Let's say I'm delivering safety awareness training for everyone, the 1,000 employees. And my objective is to prevent 80% of the major safety uh, incidences happening a year. So taking the 80% and applying it to all the additional costs, they will be reduced by 80%. So 150,000 will become 30,000. So the company is saving $120,000 in penalty. The absenteeism will be 60 days instead of 300 days. And that means um, uh, uh, $7,200 in saving in terms of salaries paid for paid leaves like absenteeism or day off. The insurance renewal will be reduced from 20,000 to 4,000, and that's a saving of $16,000. So if you sum up all the profits you are getting, if your safety training goes well and you design it correctly, then you have, ladies and gentlemen, is a benefit of $142,200 of training benefits. That's a very nice number. Now let's see what would be a 
an average cost of such train. So let's say I am contacting a, tra a, a training provider that de develops pre-recorded videos, sessions, interactive uh, uh, exams and quizzes and questions uh, on safety. And I asked this provider to develop for me a customized two-hour training that can be offered online on my learning management system. So the cost would be around $50,000. And assume that every employee is spend, of the 1,000 is spending two hours in an eight hour day, then the cost of salaries would be uh, $7,500. If you, if you do it, like it's, uh, the number of hours that the employees are spending, the hour is $30, then it's simple math. And finally, let's say that to set up your LMS, you will spend around $2,500. Then the total cost would be $60,000. And here you go. You have all what you need for the formula. You have the benefits and you have the cost. And you can directly go ahead and apply it. You will have 137% uh, ROI on the training, which is again, again, a very, uh, a very healthy number. It means that every dollar, uh, every dollar you are spending is returning uh, $1.37 in return. And that's very good in terms of training itself. So when you go and pitch the training solution that you thought of, which is the two hour online, and some managers would, would say, oh, but it's too much $50,000 for the provider and setting up the LMS and etc. Can't you do it yourself? Can we just shoot some videos? You know, then how to defend your case in this, uh, uh, in this scenario. All good? Counting, countdown from five. No questions, I go forward. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. No news is good news, hopefully. So let's move to the third and final example in that case. And here I chose a case from a customer service training offered to a... Uh, oh, I have a question. All trainings can be... Calculated ROI. There are trainings, there is difficulty to calculate the ROI. Rustam, I couldn't agree more. Yes, they are uh, difficult, absolutely. Uh, but if you have a specific example in mind that you would like to share, then we will try to see whether it is impossible or not. Difficult? Yes, it is difficult. Because uh, if you consider the examples that we have shown, there's lots of data that you need to uh, gather. There is lots of like salary cost, like the, uh, the insurance cost, how you can calculate this, how you can calculate that. Sometimes you need some um, intermediate variables between the training and the ROI itself. I'm sure that it is difficult. And being difficult, in fact, unfortunately, only 5% of trainings calculate their, uh, have their ROI calculated currently. But I'm hoping that with more practices as with more examples, you can, uh, you can do that. However, please feel free to type in uh, an example and maybe we can find the solution together. Meanwhile, allow me to continue with the third example from a customer service um, uh, from a customer service training. So let's say that a bank found out that they are losing 400 retail clients a year because of bad customer service of call center agents. So the customer satisfaction score for the 15 agents who interacted with those clients was 72%. And the bank knows that from benchmark in the market as well. And Picking up on what Rustam was discussing, getting this benchmark, which is when the client will not be lost from a bank, is something that you need to do as a training manager. You need to 
partner with customer service department. You need to read research in the market. You need to do research in the market sometimes in order to get this. And let's say that the um, head of retail in the bank told me that on average, every client we lose make us lose $200. So as you can see, the training benefit would be as follow. If we can save through the training in, on customer service, 350 clients out of the 400 by increasing their satisfaction from 72% to 90%, then we will save the bank a loss of $70,000. And that's the benefit from the training itself. Now, having said that, what would be the cost of the training? And here it's a little bit tricky. So I'm assuming that you have 15 call center agents and you cannot take them all at once to go and attend the training because your call center cannot be turned off. So that's why you decide to uh, divide them into two groups. And that's why the provider is going to run a six day customer service training. Why six day? Because in this case, we assume that a two day or one day introduction about customer satisfaction will not really create the change that we need. So we have developed a six day full fledged customer service training program that would help us apply and get the results that uh, we want. Now, having said that, the provider is going to deliver twice. This means that uh, the cost of salaries is, uh, sorry, this means that the session, the sixth day is for 24,000 and the total is 48,000. And we're assuming that if an agent's hour is $50, then, uh, uh, sorry, if, it, if an agent's day is uh, $50 as a salary, then the total would be $4,500 in terms of cost. The catering would cost us $12,000 and you will end up with a cost of $64,500. US So as you can see, now again, we have the uh, $70,000, the benefit, and we have the cost. Again, we go directly to implement the ROI formula, which is in this case 8.5%. So it means for every dollar you spend, you are winning 0, uh, 0 like nine cent per dollar. You are gaining nine cent uh, per dollar. Now that's that. This number is a little bit low, but I uh, I tried in the examples to give you all the benchmarking that makes sense. Something that's very low, something that's extremely high, and something that's in the middle as well. Uh, How's it going so far? You're uh, you're okay. Is uh, is well clear for you? Any question that you'd like to uh, to to jot down in the chat? I'm going to give you twenty seconds. Yes, Emil, please. Okay, so uh, I have two questions. One about sharing the slides, which is certainly possible. Just send me a note, please. You have my email. Send me a note that you need the slides and I'm gonna share it with you uh, very gladly. Uh, regarding the uh, question that Emil asked, and I believe that this would ask as, uh, that would answer as well the, uh, at least partially what Rustam is asking. So uh, leadership training, let me ask you, why do you do leadership training? Now, the basic answer is to develop better leadership skills within our organization. Now, why do you develop leadership skills within the organization? Is it just because leadership is uh, a nice word or a buzzword that you need to work on and it's a trendy issue that you need to follow up upon? Never. Let me tell you one example 
okay but leadership is a very uh, big topic and again please remember that every training starts with a business problem take a look at your left a business problem so a business problem initiates leadership training let me uh, assume a leadership problem which is a high turnover rate let's say that as a recruitment manager i come to the training manager and tell him out of the top talents that i am recruiting i'm losing 25 percent of them every year and those 25 percent are reporting a very bad relationship with their direct managers in their exit interviews what they said is that uh they have problems with their direct managers and that's why they are leaving the organization now you might tell me okay a talent goes then you recruit another one but this means if you recruit someone then you have two sources of uh, money loss the first one is you're losing the time of the recruiters your internal talent acquisition department you're paying ads to recruit people you're paying time to uh, and which which is money and the salaries of the recruitment team to uh, bring people in interview them etc and also you might be uh, needing a linkedin a recruiter profile which costs money or to deal with a recruitment agency that would also charge you lots of money so if leadership is causing high turnover then leadership is costing us money and when i design the leadership training i design the leadership training to reduce the turnover and if i do the math i will be able to identify every potential uh, candidate that i save in the organization how much money i save in terms of recruitment and uh, recruitment agencies and talent acquisition salary time and here you go you have your benefit you have your cost and you have your uh, roi how does it sound emil okay i hope i answered your question so please let me know great excellent so as you can see certainly the behavioral training required from you more uh, elaboration in order to establish the link and that's why i call this webinar linking training intervention to business results this link ladies and gentlemen should be established within your mind uh, very fast and this comes only with the practice that you do so we have seen three examples so far and to wrap up before i allow sometimes for uh, more questions i'd like to pinpoint the um, uh, the following so here also we have uh, we have calculated the bank issue now remember that we started always with defining the business problem so the business problem how do you do it in parallel what you do is your training needs identification so in the itn process you will be able to really decipher the business problem and the next step which is the training benefits you need to have mastery of instructional design and this will help you in order to design the right training okay not every customer service training will bring the satisfaction level from 72 percent up to 90 percent okay you need to design the training very well how do you uh, how do you decide uh, whether this training can be done online can be pre-recorded or needs to be a face-to-face -face, needs to be virtual or needs to be a classroom could it could reading an article solve the issue that's that requires instructional design and you need also to master this area and the third part which is the training course you need really to have an idea or a grasp mastery maybe about training evaluation methodologies and how you can drink, uh, uh, draw your kpis develop your training dashboard to make sense that the two uh, rails that uh, that i showed you in the more uh, in the beginning 
they can meet uh, somewhere as your efforts evolve in the future. Now, a couple of uh, warnings, let me say, just for you not to uh, directly go and do the math without uh, thinking about it. So certainly, obviously, whenever the cost of training goes up, then the ROI will go down. That's for sure. Whenever the benefit goes down, then the ROI goes down. I get it. If the cost goes down, then the ROI will go up. And if the benefit goes up, then the ROI goes up. Now, when both cost and benefit goes up, go up, then the ROI, we cannot tell unless the benefit goes really higher in terms of relationship to the cost itself. So what I'm trying to do is the following. Uh, I'm trying to tell you that the basic thinking is make sure that you decrease the cost and increase the benefit, right? That's obvious. That's simple. You don't need uh, lots of expertise. A grade uh, seven student might be able to explain this. However, what a seventh grader would not be able to tell you is that if the cost of the training goes up, Sometimes, if the cost goes up due to better quality of training and a better rigorous training, then the benefit might skyrocket. And then the ROI will really, really go up. And if the cost goes down, sometimes you jeopardize the benefit. And if the cost and benefit go down, then the ROI will be negative sometimes. So please beware of this. I'm just gonna throw some examples for the uh, examples for the case of closing, not more. Don't think about uh, renting a cheap hotel to save two hundred dollars to maximize your ROI. Instead, make sure you choose the right provider to increase massively your benefits, and then you will be able to do it in the Ritz Cult. That's one. Uh, second, choosing the cheapest provider is not always the right choice, Un unless, unless you're buying a, uh, a commodity. And in training, there is commodity, like for example, Nowadays, you can go and purchase uh, a, an online library of videos. And you might have two representatives for the same provider in your market. So you just go for the cheaper. That's okay. But when you are designing a training with specific learning objectives to make sure that you achieve your business objectives, then you will not, uh, you will not have it as easy as it goes. So cheaper doesn't mean better ROI because sometimes if cost goes up, goes down, then the benefit will plummet down as well. So uh, having said that, I come up to uh, the end of this webinar and I'm gonna allow you time now for some questions. So feel free to write down your questions in the chat in order to discuss them together. Meanwhile, I'm gonna display a list of the upcoming courses that we are offering in, on our virtual platform that uh, you can have a look at and they are scheduled uh, next week. So you can uh, just drop me a note. I'm gonna text you my email right now. You can drop me a note. If you would like to know more about any of those courses, or you can visit our website, click on the online banner, and then you can easily go there and check the courses that you need. So um, I'm gonna allow maybe some few minutes 
or if I don't want to keep you waiting, why don't you just uh, say yes in the chat if you have a question? Uh, so this way I know to uh, whether to uh, keep everybody waiting or not. Would that be okay, please? Otherwise, just uh, okay. Emil, you have another question. Thank you very much. Go ahead, please. We're waiting you. Someone else might think about a question. Tom, so welcome. Thank you very much. I always, I always enjoy having you in my uh, webinars. You always, uh, you always have some very interesting questions. Emil, great question. So, how do you isolate the impact of training? Now, there are some techniques that you can do, and sometimes isolation is not possible. But I'm gonna talk about uh, the times when isolation is uh, is possible. So, you might go for a control group, for example. Like, what what do you mean by control group? If uh, you, you recall the example of the call center you might start with one team and the other team you don't uh, uh, you don't do that you can also use some hr analytics uh, tools like uh, 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 like a, a, a chi square uh, test or a uh, um, i forget the name another 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 statistics test that makes you check whether well, correlation for example you can use the Pearson correlation to make sure that your results are significantly correlated you can draw in a, a regression equation to make sure that the training has an impact on the uh, other variables that you seek as well but certainly uh, let's say uh, we are talking about uh, the the sales training of the uh, of the real estate let's assume that we are in dubai and the those guys are not achieving the objective that we gave them in a corona time then certainly there is a force majeure that is not allowing us to uh, to do that so you cannot blame the training and at the same time if for example uh, they have a very powerful product that they uh, monopolize in the market and they can easily sell more then they would they wouldn't be also the training that will get the credit for that but as you have and you collect more cases then you will be able to prove your case more solidly in front of your uh, management i hope i answered your question Amy. Uh, oh, Muhammad, this uh, no, we we'll, uh, unfortunately the the platform is uh, is Zoom, Webex is another platform, so you will not be able to you will not be able to uh, to see the webinar on Webex. Great, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, joining this. Uh, webinar i hope it was uh, interesting i hope it answers the some question for you thank you hassa very kind of you to uh, to share your uh, your appreciation on the chat so uh, uh, that's it for the day i hope you uh, enjoy the rest of the day i wish you uh, ramadan kareem as well hope that this uh, holy month will bring all the uh, blessings for uh, you and your family and also will bring health and safety to everyone uh, of us and everyone that we love as well in those very uh, uh, distinguished times having said that i would like to uh, thank every one of you for uh, joining today and hope to see you uh, later on in uh, in more webinars uh, with Merck Training and Consulting. Goodbye. Merck.com